Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So I'm going to show you how to make what I'm calling a tower block card. So you can see all of the sides, every single panel is covered. It will fold flat. Now this, I'm going to show you three sizes. This one will fold flat and fit in a six by eight. And that size is on the envelope punch board. You can also make your own. I have DIY envelope, how to you know show you how to make envelopes really easily and you can buy six by eight size envelopes in the uk i know anyway so but you can make an envelope to fit this one and it's a really nice size this is my favorite size across the three and it's really easy for the person to know what to do with it when they you know take it out of the envelope you can see they've got a lovely uh, sentiment on the front i made this during a facebook live and i changed it up from how it was on the live and I used the Card Making Magic Paper Craft Society Box 18 for all the decoration there, the flowers and the sentiment on the front. Then I've got this one here. So this one will lay flat and become an 8x8 size so you'd need a, a larger envelope. Again you can buy 8x8 envelopes in the UK. Um, I'm sure there'll be some places you know in other parts of the world as well but otherwise you know you can easily make an envelope for this but I thought this one well all of them would look really nice with photos on you know it'd be great for maybe a baby's first birthday or a 21st birthday a wedding anniversary with all different pictures we were also talking in the live saying it would look great um, for gamers so I thought about Minecraft you've also got Rubik's Cube um someone said about a cat scratching post you could have cats kind of all on all the different levels it was just endless literally the possibilities are endless and because you can mat and layer this in lots of different ways that also will transform the way it looks because if i bring this one back in can you see i've got this longer panel here and then i've got longer panels down the side whereas this one is just squares all over so just to show you kind of the different ways to decorate it. If you want something that's a bit smaller, then I've got this one here, which when you fold it flat will fit in a six by six envelope or one of my box envelopes. I'll link them up here as well. And then when you open it up, you can see here you have a thinner middle kind of square. Now I saw a similar shape. I think it was probably going to be more this size. And it was an image of a brochure by the foldfactory.com. It wasn't a card, but I loved the style of it. So I just put my <laughs> brain to work and this is what I've come up with. And I think I found probably the easiest way to do it. Someone might see this and think there's a, a, another way, but um, that is what we're going to make. So let's get into the tutorial. So for today's card, I'm using the Find in Paradise Dovecraft. So I've already cut all of my pieces there and I'm going to stamp directly onto it this time. And I think I'm going to use the birthday wishes here. And this is an older set by Woodware and it's the big birthday words. So that's the product. Again, I'll link all of that in the description box below. Now, I also have these templates because I'm not going to be, I don't need that one. Um, I'm not going to make, be making all of these. I'm going to make this size again. Um, I just I think that will be the most popular size but I've got here the templates for the other two so this is for the one that I'm going to make today and I'll talk you through that as we do them but these are the sizes for the other ones and I'm just going to pop what that size would be so this is a six by eight piece of card so I will take photos of these um, they'll actually be that way up I will take photos of both of these and put them on my blog the but the process of putting them together is exactly the same no matter what size you do and the squares are all the same size across the three cards they're all a two by two size square so your mats and layers will be the same as well it's just the the way you put it to the the way you lay out your mats and layers will be different but those will go up so again if you want to have that six by six size then just follow that template and then that's for that larger um eight by eight when it's flat Okay, so you will want to cut yourself four pieces of six by six for this size that I'm going to do. You're going to score every one exactly the same way. So I've got this here. Now, there are also two ways to score this. If you don't mind having your score lines visible. So can you see just here? There's the score line there and there. If you're going to fill it with all squares, then I don't think the score lines matter that you can see them. But you might want to do a matte layer to so say on this one here, you might want to do a matte layer. That's a C shape that goes all the way around like that one big matte layer. So for that reason, you can score all the way through or you can partially score. Now, I'm partially scoring. So if I show you these pieces here, you can see there's no score line on the rest of that at all. The score lines are just where these tabs are. 
If you're not bothered and you want to do the easiest way, then you just score across all of the templates. You just score right the way down. So you'll want to score for this size. If you don't care about the score lines being visible and you just want an easy way to do it, you're going to score it two and four, two and four all the way down. I don't want this score line here, here or here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to score it two down to the two inch marker. So I'm going to score down here to this point. So I'm going to score down to two from two. I'm then going to hover my stylus over two inches more. And I'm going to start scoring again at four inches. So I'm now doing this score line here. So we've got rid of that. If you would like to lay a ruler down here and follow along your ruler, you can. You might be using a trimmer that has the scoring and the trimmer in one. So you can just lift your score tool up and hover it over and then just pop it back down again. OK, so that was at two inches. Then you want to come along to four inches, but you want to now miss the first two inches. You want you actually want to start scoring at, at two inches down to four. So you're scoring now where we've missed the scoring there. So you're not doing this score line here or here. You're just doing this one here. Now we want to join the score lines up. So if you now rotate it and you score from two and you score at two and four down to that score line you just done. So you'll be joining them up. So I've just now scored down here and here. So I've now got this square. If I bring that up there, you can see my square there. OK, then I'm going to rotate it right the way around the other side. And I'm going to score again at two and four just down to the score line. So I'm just joining them up. So if I rotate this around, I've just done the two and four down to here. And you'll now see this shape. Pop it back in. You want to make sure that you've got it back where you originally were. OK, you want to now also score at one and a half just down to the first score line. So we're just now scoring this one here. So this is a tab. Then miss that section and again, continue scoring. So again. And that was at one and a half down to the two, miss two inches and then start again at four down. So this is just a little bit more, um, there's more steps to this version by not having the score lines. But otherwise, you know, if you just scored all the way down, you will still score these ones because you want to create these tabs. And then this one is at four and a half. But again, you're going to miss this section. You're just going to start here. You can see where I've put the tab in there. So again, I'm just going to come down and just add that score line. So before I cut it, this is again where you should kind of have your if i lay this over here you can see what i've created and again hopefully that makes you know sense but these will all you know i'll take photos of all of these so get rid of the scoreboard and then you want to grab your scissors and you're going to cut down the two score lines on each of your sides so that one and then rotate and then that smaller one again i'll bring the template in so you can see where i've just cut so if i bring this one in here so i've just cut down i'll cut these ones so i've just cut down that one just to the first score line and then that one so you're cutting right down to the the um the first score line there don't worry about these ones and then I'm going to cut down the tab score line. So you're actually then removing this section. So that's that piece there and that one there. So again, you can just see. And then I'm going to remove this one. And that's that piece there. OK. With the little tabs, just take a little wedge off of the corners there so it will just help everything fold in and I've also removed the score lines on these pieces in fact and take that one away a bit more just get rid of the score line you don't need to see any of that okay so again if I lay it over my template you can see what I've just cut away okay now you can fold and burnish these like I said, it'd be exactly the same. It doesn't matter what template you've done. So again, if you've got the so if you've got the bigger one here, if I just bring this one in, 
you can see the top half of it there is the same. Oh, that's good. You're going to have that extra bit at the bottom. Okay, so everything gets cut the same way. The only thing that is slightly different is this one, but it's only the middle section. So you see here, we've got that large two inch middle. This one, you've only got a one inch section, but the, the overall shape, you can see there, it's kind of the same. So I've got, you want to do that four times. So I've got all my pieces here. Now, if you want to stamp directly onto the cardstock, then you want to do that before you put it together. So I want to stamp this sentiment here the birthday wishes and I want to have that in the middle here and it fits perfectly so I'm going to get that stamped okay so that's stamped now so I'm going to have the same area on the back to be able to write my message and I'm going to lock them into place. So you can see there, always make sure that the single square is over the top there like that. You can start to see already how it's going to work. Really butt it right up. Make sure they're right up next to each other. Flip it over. And then you want to add your glue over the tab and then lay that down. And do the outer ones first. And then this one. In the middle like so so now when I open it see straight away you've got your hinge and how they connect inside there so then I'm going to grab the next one put that, that way again that is going to go over that one you can see they all slot in really neatly like so again turn it over and you can just line them up, move it around, make sure you're happy where they are. Put my glue again on the two outer tabs. You can do it a different sequence if you want. This is just how I've been doing it, like so. And then this one, like that. Okay, so now we've got those three sides. And then this one here. So there is no front or back because there's, there's joins on every corner. But now this one goes in, this will become the front. So again, locking it in, flip it over, turn the tabs over. And then finish with the middle one. Okay, so now we've got all four pieces in place. And then we just need to join it together and you will still do it the same way. So you just fold that tab in, fold those tabs in. And again, this time you're going to add the glue to all three at the same time. So You could use double sided tape if you would prefer. But you do have a bit of wiggle room this way. And then just lock, always focus on this square, get that in, get it pushed right up. And then you can fold the whole thing flat and just let it go where it wants to go. As long as you've folded your tabs in, then they will stick where they should. OK, and then just bring it back around and lay it flat the way it will be in the envelope. And that way, again, you can just burnish all of those score lines. You can see inside there it's nice and neat. Now, if you've left some of the score line, can you see there? Mine's just kind of catching a bit and I can see some of the score line. So that's why it's good to get rid of it. So I'm just going to go in there and just tidy that up a bit. This reminds me a little bit of the never ending card or the infinity cards that I've done, because if you don't remove the score lines on those, you get the same thing happen. It just kind of buckles. So I'm just going to very carefully. There we go. But now that moves much better okay again like so so that moves much better now and there you can see we've got the card so that's the front with my sentiment and then this one will be the back so I'm going to leave that plain that's where I'm going to write my message 
Now it's down to decorating. So what I'm going to do in the blog is I'm not going to write down the quantities of the mats and layers. I'm just going to put the sizes because everybody will decorate theirs differently. But the standard square across all the sizes will be a one and three quarter mat layer squared and then a one and a half squared paper, pattern paper. And you can see that size will fit in all the squares. This one here, I've just done a mat. I haven't done a layer, but you can see it's the same size and even on this one here. So that's the size of the square, but the amount is up to you because some people might now do rectangles here rather than two squares. If you want to do a rectangle, then that will be, because this is a four inch piece, this width. So you'll want a three and three quarter by one and three quarters, and then three and a half by one and a half pattern paper on top. The long one through the middle, again, the widths of them all are the same. So it's going to be, again, uh, one and three quarter by, if you're doing it this height, it will be one and three quarters by five and three quarters, and then one and a half by five and a half down. And that's what those ones are there. So again, just to show you how they would look. For this one here, this is one inch wide. So again, the length is the same, so five and three quarters, but it would be three quarters. And then your pattern paper would be five and a half by half an inch. I drop everything down by a quarter inch increments. Again, I'll put all the different kind of ones that I think you will use in my blog, but I won't put the quantities because you're all going to do different. So I've got two long ones because I'm going to do a long floral one down this side here and then another one down that side there and then I'm going to fill everything else with the squares and then I've got all the different squares here that I'm going to use so I'm going to pop it on high speed now and I'm going to get everything stuck down finished so I've got the pinks with the floral on the front and then onto the back I've done the green with the rest of the floral and I've left that space there so you can pop it flat and you can write your message on there as well so there's the back there's the front you can see when it's all laid down how it all looks as well with the panels and then it would just very easily go into that shape and I'll just bring this one over so again you can see the two together there so I think it's come together really well it's so unusual I just saw that shape and I thought that has to be a way of making it into a card and I think it's yeah I think it's come together well and like I said at the beginning the the themes for these this style even is endless I think there's just so much you can do with this so I look forward to seeing everybody's versions if you do make this and you want to share them we have a group called Mixed Up Crafters on Facebook and you can share anything you've made following my tutorials over there also popping up now will be some more kind of block style cards similar to this in terms of maybe the decoration um with lots of squares and stuff so you might want to watch those next and there'll be a picture of my face as well if you haven't subscribed and you enjoyed today's tutorial please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell and that way you'll be notified every time a new tutorial comes up so i'm now going to make some envelopes for these and uh, yeah i can't wait to give them out thanks for watching as always and i'll be back again very soon bye